Hi, it's Dr. Saab here, and I'm going to show you the main features of this Mercedes Benz GLA. I should add that this is my mum and dad's GLA, which I'm going to show you. So, a big thank you to them for letting me record this video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the main features of this Mercedes Benz GLA. This video is perfect for anyone who has just bought this type of GLA or if you are thinking of buying one. You might also find this summary sheet I have made which summarizes all of the main features and options available on most GLA models. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you have any comments, please feel free to comment and subscribe for more content like this. This video is one of my first videos I ever actually film, so I apologize for the audio and future videos I've made will not be like this. First, I'm gonna go through all the external unique features of this particular GLA. This model is the GLA 200D Sport Executive. You can get Premium and Premium Plus. So this car has got the executive package, which means you get the halogen headlights. With the Premium and Premium Plus package, you will get LED headlights or by Xenon lights depending on what year you go for. Check out the link below where everything is summarized including what the differences are between the Executive Premium Premium Plus package and the difference between SE, Sport and AMG line. Going back to the video, so because this car has Executive package you also get the sensors front and back. With the Sport model you also get twin tailpipes. Moving to the rear of the car, I'm going to show you how to use the fuel flap. So make sure the car is unlocked and then you just push the flap just there. So here you have your tyre pressures and the actual tyre size on this car. To use the fuel cap, all you do, never actually let it hang like that. Instead, put the fuel flap right there and then when you're finished, just put it back in. To open the tailgate, you can use the key or there's a switch just here which you pull which gives you access to the tailgate. If you think it's a bit too high, what you can do is press the switch and then stop when you're ready at the correct height and then hold the stop switch when you hear that beep that means the next time you open the tailgate it'll, it'll only go to that height if you want to put it back to the highest setting all you need to do is push the tailgate hold the switch that beep means that's saved original height. Now the boot on the GLA is really good and you have some handy little storage even under the, the boot. What you can do, you can actually set the under tray to that height. You've also got first aid. Sometimes the first aid can be under the tray the locking wheel bolts should also be in the car. Might be under the tray, yep. I'd recommend leaving this in the car so whenever your tire needs changing or for, for service. This is just for inflation. If you break down, you can inflate your tires. I would recommend never using the tire inflation kit as uh, your car has got breakdown cover as long as it's serviced by Mercedes Benz. To use this function, you've got the SOS switch inside the car, or you've got a number here, or you've got a number here that you can call, and that's for your roadside assistance. The SOS switch is just here. I should mention, if you ever use the tire inflation kit, it can actually ruin your tires, so they may not be repairable after you use them. So it won't be usable after you use the tire inflation kit. If it's just a small puncher, the tire can be repaired. But if you use the tire inflation kit, 
it will ruin the tyre and you'll have to buy a brand new tyre. You've also got handy places to carry a bag for loose items. You can also remove the parcel shelf by just pulling this and then this just pulls out. You've also got some thread drain points and a 12 volt socket. Another useful feature, you've got this little area which opens up where you can store long items and still have two seats. Now to fold the seats, it's very simple. Just go around, pull this lever here and the seats fold down. Same on the other side and you can see it's a very useful bit of space. Some other features on the back, on the, the actual doors, they have char locks and right now that's on for the char lock. Push down and it's off. Simple way to tell that it's on. That marries up. That means it's off. You can use it as a normal door. Moving to the interior, you can see it's very spacious. Got your vents, 12 volt socket at the back, useful nets to store stuff. Nice bits of storage on the side. I love a good armrest in the back where you can rest your arm. Got your cup holder. Moving away from the armrest, you can see um, in the roof there's lights, reading light, and that is actually the rear parking sensor, which you can look at either by turning around or using the rear mirror. Electric windows are standard. Now to open the car, you just need to use the key, press the unlock button. Now I'm going to go through all the main features on the front of the car. Now I'm going to show you how to start the car. So some cars may have a button here. This car was an option with that. So I'll put the key in. And when I turn it again, you'll see these lights. And then when you're ready, turn the key. You should never turn the key all the way around in one go. That's not recommended. You should always give the car a moment. When you start the car, what you're normally looking for is that little light there, just to go away, and then it's ready to start. As you begin to drive, the doors do lock themselves, but if you want to, you can lock and unlock manually. To operate the mirrors, what you need to do is select which side you want to change and then you can use a switch here to adjust how you want the mirror. You have your electric windows and then this switch prevents rear passengers from using the rear windows. Moving down from there you'll be able to see this switch here which allows you to open the tailgate. You can even close the tailgate when the car's running. What you do is push. Move into the ignition area. You also have automatic lights where you pull to release the handbrake and push to put the handbrake on. Now moving to the steering wheel. So you have your volume control buttons here, you can answer your phone call, decline a phone call. This button is useful when using the sat nav. These switches work for that part of the screen. And these switches control that part of the screen. 
I'll show you quickly how to use the switches. If I press up, I tend to use this screen. And you'll see as you press up and down, you've got all these different options. Just gives you more information. If I press left, I can then display other things, including the sat nav, which is quite useful. Uh, if you've got your radio, you can change the radio using the up and down switches. You have your telephone, and you can actually make phone calls using the buttons here. Uh, if you want to, you can switch off certain systems. And then moving to serve. This is where you can check your tire pressures, check when the next service is due, and settings just allows you to customize the car. And if you do mess anything up, or you feel you want to have it at the original settings, just select factory settings. But I tend to leave the display there so I can see the speedometer. Some people might like this screen so you can see the temperature. When you first start the car, I always recommend driving below 2000 revs and then when the temperature gauge is about 90 degrees that's when you can really drive the car a bit more sportingly. The main reason I recommend that is so that you don't damage the engine of your car. So you can adjust the seat here. You can decrease the height of of the back you can also extend this part of the seat which will give you added comfort if required you can also increase or decrease nice and easy and then obviously just moving the back of that seat there. Useful bit of storage which is quite... I always put my uh, pack of tissues in there. So you have two stalks. I'm going to show you the one on the left first. So the one on the left allows you to indicate that's to actually wash the windscreen, that switch there. You'll see here to actually the window wipers, you've got little dots here. And if you set to that one, that's a very slow automatic mode to do the windscreen wipers. That one's a bit faster, automatic windscreen. And then the ones with the physical line is just a manual way of just doing the wipers. This switch here, if you pull it, allows you to use the rear wiper and then if you push it all the way up, the rear windscreen will then be washed and the wiper will wipe away all residue of water. Make sure you switch it off as it'll just continue to work. If you pull the stalk, then you'll see just there the full beams are on right there. Now moving to the right, you can see there's another stalk and that allows you to actually put the car into drive, neutral, reverse. So all you do is make sure your foot is on the brake. And you'll see that the car is in drive. It marries up with the actual stalk. So if I push it up just slightly, it's in neutral. If I put it back into drive all the way down, if I push the stalk all the way up, the car will go into reverse. Then my reverse camera pops up. When I'm ready to stop and switch off the car, all I'll do is push that switch and that then puts the car into park. 
So when you first start the car, the handbrake will be on. That's the handbrake light. And when I put the car into drive and press the accelerator, it will actually release the handbrake. And then I can carry on driving. When I'm ready to switch off the car, all I'll do is push this button here. It goes then into park. And when I switch the car off, the handbrake is automatically applied. So you never actually really need to use that, that switch or the pull lever. What you can do before you leave the car, just make sure that light's on and then leave your car. Now I'm just going to show you some features on the top of the, the roof. Here you have a reading light on both sides. You can actually switch off the lights if you want to or, or if you press that switch all the lights come on for the car and then if you want the rear lights to come on you just press that switch press it again to switch it off put it into the middle and then automatically the lights will come on moving away from these switches I'll just show you this so this is a very important button here the SOS switch in an emergency including a breakdown just press that switch and your location will be sent to Mercedes-Benz you're giving permission for Mercedes-Benz to say this is where I am and I need assistance and that can be anything from a fire police or ambulance emergency um, a breakdown as well they'll know your location and they'll be able to send out the relevant people. Use this switch in a, when you have broken down so that your car can be towed away. This switch is very useful if you want to ever leave passengers in the car and then lock the car from the key. The alarm won't go off as long as that switch has been pressed. Before I forget I better show you this useful little storage where you can store some sunglasses. You've also got a glove box with useful space and you can actually store a pen which I would recommend. You have also got this stalk under the steering wheel and this is for the cruise control. So to use the cruise control, all you do is select up, select down to decrease the speed or increase the speed. If you push that button, speed limiter is on, which means the speed will only be limited to 20 miles per hour. If I push the stalk up, you can see I can increase the speed limit which means when I accelerate it will not go above 50 miles per hour unless I put my foot all the way down and then it will remove the speed limiter or if I touch the brakes. To switch off speed limiter just push that switch there and then the light goes away and then I can use the cruise control like normal. Now moving to the infotainment system to put the infotainment system on, just press that switch there and it comes alive. What I always do is use the switches on here. Now I'm going to show you how to connect your Bluetooth to your Mercedes Benz. First go to your phone Go to settings, Bluetooth and make sure that's on. Now the Bluetooth is on. You now want to use this rotary dial. Select connect device by pushing in the button. Now select search VI Talents. Now go back to the phone and maybe 
maybe just switch it on and off. Eventually it will pop up. There we go, MB Bluetooth. Select that. Now that's the code that should marry up with the code here. If so, select pair. And on here, push down, select yes. And now we are connected. On the phone, you might get a prompt to connect an app. You can ignore that if you want to, or download the relevant Mercedes Me app. I'd recommend pressing the I button and then clicking these to on. And now your messages will appear on the infotainment system. And sync contacts means that you will get all your contact display on the infotainment right here. Show notifications means that you will be able to see your messages here without a stop. Now I'm going to show you how to use the navigation. So I find it easier just selecting the button there. Just agree to that. This is quite simple to use. All I'll do is select address and I always enter the postcode of wherever you want to go and then it'll take you to the destination. Again, if I want to listen to the radio, just select the radio button. There is another way to access these buttons on the infotainment system. And all I have to do is push forward and then I'll be able to get access to these tabs which are the exact same functions here. If I want to go down, I can then access other options, including changing the equalizer or the balance. Going back to the radio, I can now select different radios by rotating the dial and let's say I want to save one of these radio stations as a preset the easiest way to do it is selecting let's say this one and then holding down the button when you hear that beep that means it's saved that as number nine next I'm gonna select the media button so you can connect USB devices and you can find that under the armrest. And you've got a USB go here and you can also charge devices in here. Useful bit of storage. While I'm here I'll just show you the armrest which also extends by pulling that. Moving back to the screen you can also connect via Bluetooth so whatever songs you've got on your phone they can play on here and you've got to remember whatever the volume of the phone is it'll mirror what's on the infotainment system so make sure it's on full volume on your phone you can also add CDs right here memory card means you can store music on an SD card and place it here if you remove this SD card You'll see it's actually a Garmin sat nav. So if you do remove that, you won't be able to use your sat nav. While I'm here, I can just show you you can also answer or decline phone calls. You got your mute button here. This button, if you press that, you go into vehicle settings and you can adjust different things for the car. So, vehicle settings in this car, you've got Quite a few nice little options. I would recommend leaving this on so you can see the lights of your car in the night and then you've also got the interior light delayed shut off. Again that's just how long you want the lights to remain. I'd go for 30 seconds. Exterior light delay shut off. I would actually set that again to 30 seconds. Ambient lighting I would select 
the maximum. And then you'll be able to see little lights around here. In here you'll see ambient lighting and in the footwells which will look really nice in the night. Interior lighting delayed shut off just means when you lock the car it'll take about 30 seconds for the lights to go off on the interior and then exterior again I've set it to 30 seconds when you lock the car. Now moving down you'll see a lot of different buttons here so the, this one is your heated seats this is, is to switch off the parking sensors that's useful if you're in a very busy area with lots of people walking around your car this is just for your eco stop start so green light means that that's on but here you'll notice there's a line through the same eco stop start symbol that means it's not going to work and that could be for several reasons it could be either it's just too hot or the battery needs a, a little extra charge or it's too cold this is just your hazards and dynamic select which is really where the fun starts if you keep pressing it you'll see you've got it on both displays and it just changes the character of the car you can also customize your own screen so if I go to individual select adapt I can now set it to drive or comfort that just means that the gearbox in comfort will be a bit softer and drive will just be it's a bit more sportier steering again your comfort will be lighter steering and then if I just select steering it'll just be heavier and my last button is just the heated seats for your passenger moving down you've got your climate control and you can see I can set different temperatures um, that 23 degrees is for me the driver 16 degrees is for my passenger and if I want to make sure that both sides are the same all I select is zone and now the temperature will be exactly the same for both sides but if I do that now it's back to different climate zone so passenger will have less and the driver will have a higher temperature Mercedes-Benz recommend that you have in your car 22 degrees another thing I recommend is selecting auto the great thing is when you leave in auto you should never really have to demist your screen again the only time I recommend using this switch when it's really cold and you and once the windscreen is clear I would recommend putting it back into auto and then the fans will operate when needed if you do want to do it manually you can by just selecting these buttons here and you'll notice up and down modes this just selects where you want the fans to operate but if you leave it in auto car will figure it out for you. If you're ever behind a lorry and the nasty gas or smoke gets into your car press this button it will then the car will then try and remove all that nasty smell out of your car. I really love this button it's the rest button on a hot day it's perfect all I'll do is set the temperature to low I'll then nip out to the shop quickly five minutes and when I come back the car will still be cool and I can leave the car locked when it's switched off but the fan will still remain running now going moving down got a nice little bit of storage here for change socket. a little extra storage here moving down you've got 
cup holders and then I haven't shown you these buttons yet but these if you press that you can set favorites and you can see there's quite a lot of different options to choose from the other button is the back button when I press that go back to the last screen I was on I can just keep pressing back until I get to the last screen I'll just quickly show you the Sun visor I'll show you this one so this is perfect to store any cards your mirror here with a courtesy light The last couple of touches, you grab handles and you've even got the hooks to store your suit on. Now I'm just going to quickly show you how to use the parking sensors on the car. So to do that I'm just going to go close to the wall there and you'll notice this little bar. As I'm getting closer the lights are getting closer That means I'm getting very, very close to that building there. You can see I'm very close. You can see I'm very close, so what I would do is just reverse it and leave about that much gap. That's now plenty of gap for anyone that needs wheelchair access around the car. Now I'm going to show you how to use the reverse camera and reverse sensors. What I'll do is put the car into reverse and you'll see I've got the camera right there and I've also got the sensor just there and it's just the same as the front one as I'm getting closer to that gate the lights will go closer and closer what I'll do I'll start reversing to talk about these lines as well as you can see that red line that means that's the end of the car so you should never go past that red line otherwise you're gonna bump the rear bumper that next line is what Mercedes-Benz recommend in terms of having enough gap for wheelchair access and then that big square that represents another car fitting in in that space. Now I'll keep going backwards. So I'll just move a bit more forward. Now I'll leave that gap and when I check the rear sensors, they're happy as well. When I check outside, there's plenty of space. If I reverse it more, you'll see the lights are getting closer. Let's stop there. And here you'll see how much gap there is on the camera. While I'm in the car, I'll just show you another great feature that I love, and that is the hold function. So when you get to a traffic lights, let's say you stop. Now you push the brake and the car will be in a hold function. Hold means that the car will stay stationary until you press the accelerator or touch the brakes. When you're ready to go, all you do is press the accelerator and the car will just move forward. I love using that hold function, especially at traffic lights, and it gives a chance for your feet just to rest. I just wanted to thank you for watching this video and if you like this video please like, share and subscribe.